everyone, welcome back. Jeb Smith here. In today's video, we are going to address the age old question of should you buy versus should you rent? Now, before you jump on the comments and say that, you know, I'm only going to tell you that you need to buy a home because I reap the rewards of people buying and selling because that's my job, I get a commission from it, stop. Because, you know, not only am I here to tell you the pros of owning real estate, I'm also going to discuss the cons. But I come from you as someone who has benefited greatly from owning real estate. Um, you know, my net worth has gained substantially from owning property. And so I can speak on behalf of the pros of real estate, of buying a property. And I'm not here to tell you that you need to buy a property. That's not the purpose of this video. I'm here to explain it to you um, and let you make the decision of whether or not it's the right decision for you because. The reality is it's not for everyone. Um, and I want to explain a couple of things up front um, you know, that, that people are going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about in this video, not only going to talk about the pros and cons of real estate, we're going to address some of the questions if, to see if you're even ready to buy real estate. But you know, one of the things that most people are going to talk about right now is that you shouldn't purchase because home prices are at all time highs. I have a problem with that because yeah, yes, real estate prices are at all time highs. Do they need to pull back? Potentially in some markets because they've increased so much over time. But understand that over time, real estate prices go up. If you look at this chart here, you'll see that over time, you can see that home prices have appreciated, right? Not only have they have they doubled, tripled, they, they've you know, quadrupled, gone up 10, 15, 20 times in some markets over the time. And I guarantee you, if you talk to someone older, your grandparents, you hear the stories of them buying a property at some value that you can't even fathom because it is so, so low. And they tell you the story of, of how, you know, at that time they paid that price for that property and they thought they were stretching themselves. They thought, you know, they were wondering how they were even going to pay that. Um, and then over time, that property has gone up substantially in value. And, and they talk about, well, you know, had I known it was going to do this, I would have bought 10 of these, or I wish I would have bought more property. Everyone has the regret of not buying that property they saw a couple of years ago at X value. And now it's, you know, three, four times X. Me personally, I've, I've got many of those um, in my arsenal. But you know, that's not what this video is about. Um, it, it's about helping you understand the pros and the cons, helping you understand whether, you know, owning is, is better than renting for you because it's not going to be for everyone. And we're going to talk about that. But before we do that, I want to ask a favor. If you're new to me, new to my channel, it's all about real estate, helping buyers, helping sellers navigate the home buying process. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you like content like this, and if you find the video helpful, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, people are going to tell you that you shouldn't buy because, you know, values are at all time highs. And, you know, I explained a moment ago my thoughts on that. Home prices are going to appreciate over time. The reality. Um, home prices in 10 years are going to be higher than they are right now. There's a lot of truth to that. But understand that not every year you're going to see appreciation in your property. There are going to be some years where you see properties decline um, in value. You might see a 5, 10, 20% decline in some markets over time. Just understand that that is real estate, right? It, it's not a, a straight up and, you know, a straight line up. Um, there are some jag, jagged edges in it um, where you'll see it depreciate, depreciate, but over time the trend is up. And another thing I'll say is don't look at your home as an investment, right? A lot of people want to tell you, hey, buy this, pro you know, buy a property because in, you know, 10 years it's going to be worth more money and, and they're looking at their home as an investment. I say look at your home as somewhere you have to live, you need shelter over your head, um, and, and reap the benefits of owning a property, but don't look at it as an investment. Um, look at it as something that you just have to have. Um, and, and then in 30 years, maybe look back on it as something that you're proud of if you're able to pay it off, um, if it gains equity over time and you're able to use that to buy something else. But don't go in with the thought that, you know, every t single you know month it needs to go up in value because it's an investment. Because if you do that, if you continue to check the value every single month or look at it every year, instead of just focusing on making the payments and, and having a place to live, you know, you're going to... Um, 
you know, it's going to be a stressful process because over time you're going to see those fluctuations and that can be, uh, you know, it can be a problem for somebody that is, is looking at the property as an investment. So before we get into the pros and cons of, of owning versus buying and why homeowners have a 44 times greater net worth than those are renters, we're going to talk about you know, are you ready? Are you ready to buy a property? Are you in a position to even consider owning versus renting? Because not everyone is going to be in that position. Um, but understand that, you know, if you're not in that position now, there are things you can do to get there. But this is, you know, just asking you some basic questions, something to consider. Um, because, you know, there are people out there considering, hey, should I own versus rent? And they don't even have a job. So know that you need steady income and steady employment. Um, you know, you, typically you want somewhere between two years of employment on the same job, you know, steady income. You know, if, if you've been affected during the pandemic or, or some other time and you, you have these furloughs, you have these layoffs uh, in that two year period, that's okay. But you, you, you know, you need some consistency in your income and your employment if you're getting financing when buying a property, because that's one of the things lenders want to see. Secondly, if you're getting a loan from a lender, you're not paying cash. The majority of people are th out there aren't paying cash. You're going to need a down payment. Um, unless you're doing VA or a USDA loan, you're going to need at least three, three and a half percent down to buy a house. In addition, you're likely going to need some closing costs. So if you don't have the three, three and a half percent down, you don't have an, you know, the ability to receive it as a gift from a friend, family member, or whoever, you're probably not in a position to purchase. But if you do have steady income, steady employment, and you have that down payment, then you're on the right track. The next thing is credit. You need some history of credit. Ideally, you have good credit history. Um, you've paid your bills on time. You have credit cards, you have car loans, you know, whatever it is, and you've paid them down over a period of time. And, and you know have a solid credit score, those are really the three fundamentals of buying a property is good credit, good employment, uh, steady employment and income, and, and a down payment. Now, if you don't have all three, but you have some, then there's some potential there, but that's really where you should start. If you have those, then you're in a position to consider the question of should you own versus should you rent. Now, the first pro versus con we're going to talk about in owning real estate is forced savings. What is forced savings? It is when you make your monthly mortgage payment every single month. You're, you're making a principal and an interest payment with that mortgage payment. Whenever you make the portion of the principal payment, it pays down the principal on that loan. So for our conversation here, let's say you have a $300,000 loan and your payment is $2,000 per month. I don't know if that's a realistic payment based on that. Those are not the numbers that came out the top of my head, but you know, every single month you make that $2,000 payment, a portion of that payment is going toward the principal on that loan. So you're paying down that principal. And let's assume that you keep that same loan for 30 years and end up paying off that property. You essentially have $300,000 in for savings because you've paid off that property. So that's $300,000 of equity sitting in a property. Yeah, it's not sitting in a bank account or a checking account, but it's sitting in a property um, which is now considered, you know, an asset because you've 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 paid it off, you own it free and clear, and you can do things with that money. You could pull that cash out through a cash out refinance and buy another property. You could pull that cash out, renovate your property, make it more worth more money. You could add on to that property. There are things you could do with that that money. And now you might be asking, well, what if I just rent for less than it would be to you know cost to own, and I'll take that money and stick it into a checking account. If you can actually do that, then great. But the majority of people out there can't. Um, they've proved it through through savings over years. Most people don't have um, a savings account with any money in it. They don't have you know the, the means necessary to even pay for emergency expenses if they need it. So when owning a property, it's forced. You know, it's not something you have to think about. Every single month you make that payment, it pays down that principal. Whereas when you rent a property and you pay the rent on that side, you're paying down your landlord's property that, you know, he's gaining the benefit of, of, you know, the, your monthly rental by you paying down the mortgage on his home. The second pro versus owning a property versus say renting is appreciation. Over time, your property is going to appreciate in value. As we discussed earlier, it's not going to happen every single year, but over time it's going to appreciate. So not only are you getting those four savings, you're gaining that appreciation 
over time. Like here in Southern California, properties increased 10, 15% just last year alone. So not only did those people that bought a year ago gain that 15% appreciation, but they also gained whatever the they paid their principal down last year, plus they have their down payment. So it's a forced savings, which is a good thing. Another pro of owning real estate is that you have a fixed payment every single month, assuming you're doing a 30 year fixed, which is what I uh, would recommend if you plan on owning property is to have a 30 year fix. So you have that fixed payment every single month. Whereas if you're a renter, your landlord dictates how much your monthly payment is. It can go up from year to year, maybe every couple of years it can go up. But the, the idea is that you're not in control of that. Whereas you have a mortgage, you have a fixed payment, you know exactly what you need to pay every single month. When you rent, again, you're paying your landlord's mortgage, which is paying down his principal. He's gaining the appreciation or she's gaining the appreciation over that period of time and your cost could fluctuate. And if you don't agree with the monthly amount that they're charging, then you have to pay to move. You have moving expenses that are your cost in order to move. So that's a downside of renting versus owning. Another pro of owning real estate is you receive tax deductions. You know, I'm not a CPA. I recommend if you have questions on this, you definitely talk to a CPA, a tax advisor, someone that does taxes, but you receive the benefit of tax deductions, right? You can write off a portion of your interest um, that you pay on that mortgage. You can write off your property taxes. There are certain expenses um, when owning real estate that you can write off versus renting a property. You don't have the ability to write off those expenses. And, and you know while you might be able to pay less in rent in some cases than owning a property, once you weigh the tax benefits in a lot of cases, it ends up being you know, your payment ends up actually being less every month in owning a property versus renting. And that's a question for, again, for a tax advisor, or CPA, someone that does taxes, that's a question to propose to them is, you know, owning this property, you know, how much, you know, way out, this is what I pay in rent, this is what my mortgage payment's going to be, how do these balance out at the end with the tax deductions? Lastly, if you own a property, you get to renovate it. You get to make it your own. You can remove walls. You can redo, you know, whatever it is on the property that you want to redo the front yard, you know, anything. Um, whereas when you rent a property, you're under the landlord's control. You can only do what, what they um, do or allow you to do, which in most cases isn't a lot. Um, so you're somewhat limited in what you can do to the property to make it your own. Now, so now let's talk about some of the downsides of owning versus renting because there are some things that you need to consider when owning a property um, that you don't have to deal with when you rent a property. And first is maintenance, right? When you rent a property, if you have a leaky toilet, the roof goes bad, something is wrong with that property, you just make a phone call to the property manager, the landlord, whoever it is, and they will come out and fix it. Whereas when you own the property, you're responsible for those, right? It, it's costly. It, it, you know, it, it might be expensive to, to replace that roof or to fix that toilet or have a plumber come out or whatever. So yeah, there are downsides in, in maintenance um, when owning versus renting. Another one is going to be if you potentially move a lot. If you're someone who travels a lot, you don't stay in one place very long, then owning a property might not be the best decision for you because you know it's hard to just pick up and leave when when owning a property you know you you have to deal with potentially selling it which you're going to incur cost you have to deal with um you know finding a landlord or being a landlord if you plan on keeping the property and renting it out and lastly you know one of the, the downsides of of owning versus renting is is the cost you know when you buy a property um at least here in southern california you know it's going to cost you you know, to get into real estate, say in my area, probably $30,000 at the minimum, because the average home price here is somewhere around 700,000. You take three, three and a half percent of that, add closing cost on, it's expensive. It's expensive to get into real estate versus renting a property. And, and that's one of the downsides. If you don't have the savings, you don't have the ability to, to, to get the down payment you know, then it's probably not, you're, you're probably not in a position to purchase a property. It's just, it's more expensive to to own in some cases when, when just getting started versus renting a property because you, you know, when renting a property, you just have to come up with a security deposit and your monthly rent. 
buying a property, you've got to come up with that down payment and those, you know, in any potential closing costs. But understand when you pay that, it's like a forced savings, right? It's going, you know, that down payment doesn't just go away. Um, a lot of people want to think, hey, I'm putting this down payment away and my money's just gone. No, it's it's going towards the equity in your property. It's like for savings. It's just moving the savings from one place to another. Granted, it's harder to access, but you know it, it's it's still there. So I can understand why it's you know that could be a downside for some people versus um, you know owning a property is is that you've got to come up with with that money up front. So again. You know, th this video isn't about telling you you need to buy a house. It's telling you why owning a property in the long run is definitely the better um, equation. It, it, you're going to benefit greatly from it and why homeowners have a 44 greater times greater net worth than those of renters. It's just because every single month when they make that payment, it's going basically into this savings account, which is your house, and you're gaining that appreciation over time. And, and over time, you know, that real estate, that asset is, is going to be worth more and, and it's going to increase your net worth. So I hope that is helpful. I hope that, you know, provides a little clarification on why you should own a property. Um, but if you do have further questions about this, do me a favor, comment below, reach out to me directly if you, um, you know, have those questions, if you want to know how to get started, because uh, I'm here to help. Uh, and I, you know, as always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch, appreciate the support. We'll see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.